welcome back for another reading of the suttas. And before I get started, I'd like to tell you kind of the reasoning behind getting into all these suttas to begin with, these meditations and poetry and background information, is that I feel very lucky this year again that... <clears throat> be a World Healing Day taking place online throughout the world. Millions and millions of people will be meditating, praying, practicing Qigong, yoga, Tai Chi, sending out healing energy for the planet, for people on April 30th. And as it happens, this is, this is my birthday, and I'm planning on meditating all day long and, and joining the party, of course, and I hope you do too. So I hope that you look it up and join us all on World Healing Day. And, um, you know, stick around for... for, for these attunements so that we can get our planet back in the shape that it should be, put our, put our intentions right, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, pray for people that need healing. And I'm, so I'm trying to give you some background information on how to how to uh, get yourself set up with, with this energy that can be sent out through the universe to protect us and, and help us. So this is, this is just a small part of it. Another thing that I will be doing in the coming weeks is adding some videos on things like Qigong and Tai Chi. So hopefully this along with the meditations um, and, and trying to get to mind, body, spirit, you know, the, the whole shebang before um, April 30th. So yeah, please stick around and subscribe. And also I could tell you that on my website I have a bunch of information too and that is jilljj.com. Okay, for, so for this next uh, part of the meditations, so for the next part of this, I've decided <laughs> to, sorry, you know, this is, once, once you start getting into real life, then, then things get a little bit messier than, than textbook versions, and so what what is going on here right now is that I'm trying to collect my thoughts but you know there's there are things that happen in the real world like um, your boyfriend walks into the room and and waves at you like the queen or um, as in as in this morning I needed to go to um, the bank and post office and you know I live in, in kind of a smaller town where people know each other's names and, and this is something that I really kind of like um, although you know that that in itself can, can get a little messy too if people get into other people's business but um, this particular town that I live in, it's 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 all right that way, you know. So anyway, I went to the uh, post office, and um, I got into a discussion about um, you know some of the more recent happenings of mail being stolen and. We have had kind of some trouble with that over the past year, and so we 
are now having our mail stopped and, and these things kind of ebb and flow over the years these these particular problems and and you know it'll that'll happen for a while and then and then the thieves will go elsewhere and and you know maybe we'll go through a period like we did in the early 90s where everybody's mailbox is getting demolished you know that kind of thing and then and then after that it's nice and peaceful and calm and <laughs> anyway so then I stopped at the local grocery store where um, I talked to the uh, firemen our, our firefighters who really cool folks um, even though they're firefighters and and um, one of the things that I always enjoy about um, going into they have a grocery store I, I always enjoy going into that grocery store and, and kind of chatting you know with them a little bit and, and I did work there for a while as a cashier just because um, you know, it was one of those things that I found really interesting, um, and and um, it was it was a very nice place to work. Um, very mellow, not not formalized. You know, we could joke about things. So, anyway, what happened now is is that um, one of the people, that, one of the firefighters that works there, is is one of these very stoic kind of. Persons, you know, very serious most of the time, and and actually, um, maybe even what what some people would would consider um, kind of kind of grumpy. But <laughs> but one thing I always enjoy doing is going in there to see if I can get this person to smile, and I managed to do that, you know, today and. It just it just kind of happened that way it was it was a flow and it was going <laughs> it was going in, in kind of a peculiar and chaotic and funny direction and so um, what happened was the woman behind the counter started talking about how these uh, uh, smokeless cigarettes um, <clears throat> caught this kid's pants on fire and this was this was the discussion that our local firefighter walked into you know and 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 so it, it brought to mind something for me that it's it's not actually funny but you know these things happen and so <laughs> so <laughs> he walked into the middle of that conversation and my recollection of working at um, a nursing home where where an elderly gentleman would go outside to, um, and he would smoke a half a cigarette and then put the other half in, in his pocket. And uh, I think just about anybody can imagine, you know, what could go along with that is that, you know, the uh, pocket shirt catches on fire. So as nurses' aides, we always had water at the ready, you know, to, to put, to, to put, Put the fire out you know when this happened with with our beloved resident so um, <clears throat> this was kind of the discussion that a firefighter walked into and it made him laugh a couple times and that that made my day for me and so then after that I went to my usual job now I have to say that being an artist you know we don't make we don't make a whole lot of money doing this it would be nice if we did and you know it'd be nice if people would actually support uh, some of the free things that I'm putting out here it, but but the thing is I am I am kind of doing a lot of this for my own enjoyment and um, one of the things they will enjoy is is having World Healing Day coming up on my birthday and so that is kind of my motivation for putting these things up on YouTube to begin with and it just really occurred to me as I was reading this story um, that it was I'm, I'm kind of to the point where this uh, of, of what that monk was talking about with you know these studies and and um, 
even even in reading this book and have have kind of gotten to the point where right now anyway I don't really want to get into doing part part four of this book um, because because the storyline to me is getting just really a little bit too um, unrealistic I guess I might say um, it's it's not it's not really fitting with with the times and, and what is going on in my life <laughs> um, you know I don't I don't live in I don't live in a castle you know I um, I'm not much for this um, beautiful beautiful princess meets charming monk or or prince and they ride off into the sunset and and I guess I guess the thing is what I'm seeing about this story that that is going on here is that I really don't know where where it's going to but but right now it is it is kind of like at a stall with with my interest in it because it's gone off in in sort of this um, <clears throat> what do you call um, I'm an artist but but when it comes to imagination I like to draw off of real life and this has kind of gotten off into uh, a fantasy land that that um, I've just never adhered really really to this fantasy land thing about prince meets princess and they ride off into the sunset and you know the actual thing is that I've got horses out here so I went out and I visited my horses for a while and and they're also one of these things these creatures that that they're just they're just gorgeous they're beautiful they they are like the best therapists in the world and so I asked my horses and and I kind of got the usual answer you know well I got the same answer as that monk got <laughs> <laughs> they just they just kind of stood there and um, Angel she drank some water and then then she stood there and she breathed in and stood very very still in her meditative state and she let out a nice sigh And she collected some energy and she drank some more water and Cora um, she just came up to the water pan and and she just stood there looking at me took a deep breath in stood there breathed out and see that's the thing about horses and princes and princesses is that you know in reality this is this is what a horse will do they don't they don't most of the time come galloping up um, very rarely do I see them do that in reality you know most of the time they're just standing there breathing in and out and they'll drink water and they'll eat hay sometimes they'll lay in the Sun but that's 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 kind of their their advice and, and that is the way that a horse would do things so um, this this whole storyline, I think, in, and um, the fact that it is going in in um, in another one of these battling sort of into one of these battling stories is 
as I said earlier, this is one of the things that just really kind of, um, my, my brain just kind of shuts off when I get into, when I get into things like military stories. Um, it, it just really doesn't, doesn't do it for me at all. Um, I've kind of lost interest, and one of the reasons for that is that, um, in, in this particular story, it was, okay, so now I'm picking things apart, like Buddha is talking about the monkey mind, and I'm letting my monkey mind roll, and, and, but, so my monkey mind is picking out one of the, one of the things that I don't care for in this, in this book, and, and that is about going to battle, and, you know, the valiant prince on his horse, and he's, he's taking this monk with him to the front lines of battle but but the other thing that I really kind of had some trouble with in this was that you know the peasants were were gladly doing this gladly going to the front lines of battle and um, the thing is in real life I'm I'm a peasant myself I, I uh, <clears throat> I'm a farmer and you know we we pick eggs and these eggs feed a lot of people so in in my estimation the thing about that is that in the day that would have been the case you know with the peasants then too is that a lot of them had probably no interest in no interest in and um, really joining the battle and it would have been something that would be counterproductive because you know in order to uh, feed and house you know you need you need the laborers uh, the farmers the people that, that grow the food to keep the kingdom running and so it it um, really to me does not make a whole lot of sense to put those that are, you know, so important to the survival of the community right on the front lines like that. And then, and then the other thing about this uh, fairy tale sort of thing that we're, we're led to believe um, exists, you know, we're told these stories about the prince and the princess. Well, um, I'm thinking the way my story would go would be that there would be another character included um, by the name of Baklava, and and she would be the the peasant twin sister princess who was banished from the kingdom, and who is called Baklava because because she's a very you know very sweet girl, but she's she's kind of crunchy and kind of kind of nutty. And so, so her, her reason for being banished was from the kingdom was, was in, in being made into a peasant was that she, she was honest and, and her other sister who the monk is in love with is, his was the one, was the one that banished her and the monk can't, can't tell the difference. And so what happens is that uh, Chiraka gets wounded in this battle and comes under the care of Baklava, who is a courier who delivers herbs to the midwives and nurses who aid and assist those that have gone to battle. And from, from there, Chiraka... <clears throat> Chiraka is cared for by, by this baklava who has the secret ingredient herbs that, that make him well and he comes to know that of, of the deceit and lies that have gone on with, with the servants of, of the king and, and even the king himself. Some of the um, things that led to the war to begin with, which is endangering, you know, not only Chiraka, but, but the peasants who provide the food and the, clo the clothing and, and shelter and, and 
you know, all these things that keep a kingdom going. So this, these are the things that Chiraco finds in, in the end. And that would be my version of the story. Now, I have to tell you, I'm making a confession here, that um, I have not read this book. I am learning as you learn. I am reading it as you're hearing it. And so, maybe sometime I'll get back to reading part four of this about the battle. I... I think it's highly unlikely right now that that I'll be doing this, but I'll put it on I'll put it on my list of, of things to things to do maybe, and um, in the meantime, if you'd like to read the whole story, I do have it available on my website, JillJJ.com, under energy healing. And so, you know, you can get a copy of that and read the rest of it there, if you'd like. And what I decided to do instead of just, you know, continuing with um, part four of that is since, since we're here anyway, I'm... I'm really happy that I I made that firefighter smile today and, and so I I've tried to contain a little bit of this extra energy that's coming from that and now I'm gonna send you an attunement, okay? So this will be a silent attunement and I'm just gonna give it ten minutes. And what I'd like you to do is just sit back and relax and, and watch the visuals in front of you and know that I am sending you waves of peace and healing and, and joy in this attunement today, okay? And then I'll end it silently. So what you can say is, I accept the, the waves that are part of this light energy from the universe. 